Part two, getting to the actual graphing part, graphing an equation. So we've done a little bit of graphing this school year, and we'll continue to weave it into certain lessons. This is one of the lessons. Um, just a quick recap of things that you should already know. You should know that when we have x, that goes on the horizontal axis, the one that goes from left to right. And when we have y, y is talking about the vertical axis, the axis that is going up and down on a graph. Um, that's background information that's not new that you should be pretty comfortable with. Um, here we go though. We're going to jump right into an example to explain how to graph an equation with two variables. And the equation that we're going to use uh, for this is the equation y equals x plus 2. All right. Um, here's a graph. I've got a blank one ready for us. Uh, if we're going to graph an equation, we've got to get some, some extra background uh, information first. Sorry about that. Um, how can I turn this into a, into a graph? The first thing I would suggest is to create for yourself a little organizer. A little, I like to make a little, little quick table with three columns in it. And this is going to help me create the information that I need to then turn this equation into a graph. So I've got, I need to get an x coordinate, I need a y coordinate, and when I put those together, that'll be my x, y coordinate pair. The beauty of this is you have some control over the points that you're going to create. You've to, to graph a line, you need, I'd say, a minimum of three points. It's a good rule of thumb to come up with three points, plot those, and then you can connect them to form the line. So you have the, the power to choose what you want to use. I would say keep it simple. Pick the smallest numbers that you possibly can. So I'm going to plug in for x the points 0, 1, and 2. And I just made those up off the top of my head. If you want to pick different numbers, go for it. Just keep in mind, the bigger numbers that you choose, the more spread out your graph is going to be, and it's going to be a, a little bit more work. I think it's easiest just to keep the numbers small. But if you want to choose the points 2, 5, and 7 for x, go for it. If you want to choose the points 1, 6, 10, go for it. I almost always choose the points 0, 1, and 2 just to keep things simple. All right, now when I plug in the first x point that I chose, which is 0, when I plug in 0 into the equation y equals x plus 2, I'll do that work right here, y equals x plus 2, and I plug in 0 for x, 0 plus 2 is 2. So when I plug in 0, y equals 2. So the matching y coordinate for x equaling 0 in this example is y equals 2. And together, 0, 2 forms our first ordered pair that will graph 0, comma 2. We need to repeat that process again. If I have my base equation, y equals x plus 2, and if I plug in 1, the second x coordinate that I chose, if I plug that in for x, 1 plus 2, is 3. So when x equals 1, the corresponding y value is 3. I plugged in 1 for x, I solved, and I got 3. So the ordered pair that fits for this is 1, 3. When x goes in, y is the matching value. Last time, my equation y equals x plus 2, I plug in 2 for x, that's the next value that I chose. And I just quickly work it out, 2 plus 2 is 4. So when I plug in x is 2, what I get out is y equaling 4. So the matching y value is 4, and that means my final ordered pair that I would graph here is 2 comma 4. So this table, it's a nice tool, I encourage you to use this create a quick little three column table, x value, y value, and then the combination of them together is the ordered pairs that you will graph. 
Remember, the x values you're in control of, you get to choose them. I chose 0, 1, and 2. I almost always will choose 0, 1, and 2 since they're nice, easy, small numbers. You plug those into the equation to get the y values. You put it together, and now I can graph. So the first point on the line for the equation y equals x plus 2 is going to appear at 0, 2. Before I can graph, I need to create a scale. I'm just going to count by ones. You might sometimes want to count by twos or by fives or by whatever you want to count by. Since I know the numbers here are all relatively small, I'm just going to count on each axis by one. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Um, and now I'm going to graph. My first point, zero, two. So the first point is zero, so that tells me to move to the left zero points, so don't move at all. And the second point is two, so I'm going to move up on the y-axis, one, two. And there's my first point on this line at zero, two. All right, check, done. Next point is at one comma three. The first point always tells you to move left or right. In this case, I'm moving to the right. I start at the origin, I move once over, and then up three. There's my second point, check done. And then my last point appears at two, four. So I start at the origin. The first point tells me to move over two, one, two. And then I go up four, one, two, three, four. And there we go. If I were to uh, draw a line that goes through these points, it would look like this. And this black line that's on the graph this is the line for the equation y equals x plus 2. And all of the points that this line goes through are points that are solutions to this equation. They are points that make this equation true. So for example, this point right here, this is a 4 comma 6. That's what that point is that I circled. 4, 6. That's a solution for this equation. If you were to plug in x equals 4 and y equals 6, this is something that makes the equation true. All of the points that are on the line are points that are solutions for the equation. So we'll do plenty more examples in class uh, together, and you'll be practicing this. It's not a super duper hard skill, but it's something that we want you to start understanding and, and seeing how to visualize an equation, and just to understand that you can visualize an equation on a graph. Um, like I said at the beginning of this lesson, it's certainly something that you're, you're really going to grow with as you go further in math. Certainly by eighth grade, it's going to be a major thing. Um, this is just the intro for that, though. Anyways, if you've got questions on it, we'll be talking about it in class, and you're welcome to, to get extra help as needed. But good luck, and use this video for a reference as needed. Happy mathing. Goodbye.